Uh, just want to get your thoughts on over your time here. Is there a game you're like, when you're long gone you'll remember most, kind of talk to people about most that you played in? And, and if it's just your first game, maybe one that's more memorable for other reasons for everyone? Um, there's a couple. Uh, there, there's definitely a couple. I think my first start probably has to go up in there against LSU. Not only was it my first start personally, but it was a huge team win and it gave us a lot of momentum going into the next season. Um, there's two that we came out on the losing side of things that were just stellar football games to um, just in general it was Clemson and Stanford last year were pretty special games um, for obvious reasons, not just because they came down to the wire and we had a shot at the at going to the playoff and it was, a, it was there was a lot of emotion and just how close of a team we were. Um, and then obviously um, playing at home uh, in Philadelphia last year was also uh, one of the more special games I've ever had. Mike, how have you seen uh, you know, a guy like Josh Adams sort of grow through this season? Where I know he was dealing with the, the injury earlier on, but you know, lately coming on a little bit stronger. What have you sort of seen out of him this year? Well, Josh is just a guy that comes to work each and every day, ready to get better and, and understands what he needs to do in order to accomplish that goal. Um, he's a great kid. Um, a hard worker and he plays hard and he had he, he did he fought through a lot of injuries that, that just were Nick um, <coughs> just kind of bothering him a little bit all, all, all at the beginning of the season. He's starting to get healthy now. He's starting to catch his stride. And we're starting to see Josh Adams that of what he's fully capable of doing. And, and um, once he does get healthy and once he starts catching his stride fully, it's going to be uh, a pretty scary sight for a lot of teams across the country to watch 33 running down the sideline. Did you as a captain ever have to kind of bring him up maybe from a low point earlier in the season where he wasn't effective, he was still dealing with that, that hamstring? I don't think so. I think Josh always kind of knew what he was capable of. He never got in a low point. Um, he's always, I don't think anybody on this team has really gotten into a low point at all this season. Everybody's done a really good job of staying positive, understanding what they need to work on. And um, Josh and I are actually from the same town in, in, in Warrington, PA, and grew up about a mile and a half from each other. So we've, we've grown closer through that. And it's just, I know Josh well, and he's, he's a guy that, that doesn't settle for mediocrity. And, he, and he, he wants to continue to grow and get better and, and produce for this football team the way he's capable of. Thanks. Mike, right over here. Uh, just all season we've been talking to you guys about can you get to a bowl game? Can you get to a bowl game? And obviously, there was a lot of work to be done. Now there's two weeks left. You guys know if you win the final two games, you'll get there. How, how much does this team want to, the opportunity to play in a bowl game? I think it's just as much as anybody else. Obviously, we want to play in a bowl game. It's a, a, a huge honor to be able to continue to do that and continue a season. And on top of that, it's, it's a great learning experience for the year to come after that. And um, Everybody wants to be in a bowl game. We don't want to be a team that, that doesn't qualify for a bowl. It's, it's, uh, that'd be a hard pill to swallow. And um, yeah, the fight is there. We, know, we understand the challenge that comes in the next two weeks with Virginia Tech and then USC the following week. But we're confident that if we uh, prepare and, and approach the game the right way, we have a shot. And um, that's all we want to do is, is be able to qualify for a bowl. Considering where you guys were at one point in the year, would that be a tremendous accomplishment for this team to, to get there? I think it would. Um, we started the year, uh, I think we were, what, two and, two and six was the worst it got at one point. Um, so to win four out of the last six against the schedule that we play it'd be, and the season that we've had would definitely be a, a huge turning point for our program and, and especially for the young guys that are in our locker room. I think it'd be a very big accomplishment to overcome what we've had to do, deal with this year and, and the tough losses that we've had. I think it'd be a huge, huge deal for us to be able to make it to the bowl game, especially with the two teams we have remaining on our schedule. You said you're coming back next year, but it is senior day. Do you, do you soak it in in any way just in case if you, you, something else develops here in the next month for well, you? I think any time you get the, the chance to play in Notre Dame Stadium, you get, you get to soak it in. Um, it's a special place. It's a special day. Um, and on top of that, you, you kind of approach football as if every game is going to be your last one because you, can, you never know when it's going to be taken away from you. Um, there are a few guys on our team that understand that this is, in fact, their last game. And they, that, that's just a factual statement. And um, 
we're going to be laying it all out on the line for them. And um, regardless of what, yeah, like I said, it, it, it's, uh, it's just special anytime you get into play in Notre Dame Stadium. But on top of that, um, to put it all on the line for the guys that, are going to, that aren't going to be here next year um, is, is definitely a special thing. And then what makes uh, Virginia Tech's defense a, a tough opponent for you guys? Well, they're talented. Um, they're extremely disciplined in what they do. Um, they're, they're, it's, it's back to getting a little bit of, of uh, more of a, of a power and physical challenge that, than we've had the last two weeks. Um, they have a phenomenal group, and they're well coached, and, and they know what they do. And that's the thing about Virginia Tech. They're not going to do some of the things that we've seen the last two weeks with Army and Navy. They're not going to be moving a lot. They're not going to be throwing everything in the kitchen sink at us, but because they, they want to see if we can play with them. And they, they, their defense has, has done a great job all year of doing their job and, and, and um, ranking amongst the top in the nation in a lot of different categories. And it's, we understand it's going to be a, a great challenge, um, but we're ready for it. Mike, as it relates to senior day, you've seen seniors come and go in, in their last game. Have you, I, I'm bringing this up because in the past, it tended to be a more emotional game for guys in their last game in Notre Dame Stadium. You guys always talk about treating each game the same, but have you ever noticed it being emotionally difficult for guys playing their last game here? Um, not so much in the, in the preparation of leading up to the game, but certainly afterwards. Um, We've had guys that um, are that are true, true Notre Dame guys that have gone through this program and prepared and done everything the right way. And after you, after the clock hits zero on Senior Day, it, it's, it hits them a little bit that that's the last time they're going to put on the gold helmet in the in the best stadium in the country. And um, it almost it, it it brings tears to your eyes just looking at that, knowing that that's over for them, and it obviously brings tears to their eyes um, knowing it's over for themselves. And and it's a it's a it's an honor to be able to play at this university. Um, it's the best in the world. We all know that, and everybody in our locker room cherishes that. And uh, the last time that you, you step foot on that stadium is, uh, is certainly an emotional day. Who are some of those guys that, that reacted that, or that you say were true Notre Dame men? I mean, you have to throw the Martin brothers in there. Um, Ronnie and I mean everybody everybody understands that uh, but the guys that I was obviously closest to were my offensive line teammates and and understanding that what we did and how what we did preparing over their four years and my three with Nick and one with Zach and 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 even my three with Ronnie as well and what and one with Chris Watt it's just uh knowing what we go through each and every day and what we put on the field for our teammates for our school and for our fans, um, it's a pretty it's a pretty tough thing to deal with when you know it's over. And um, that's why that's why those guys are so special. That's why guys on this team are so special is because they understand who they are and what they play for, and and, and the prestige that comes along with playing for this university. And um, the the reactions that you get at a senior day are are, are pretty fitting because it's it's um, it is it's tough because you, they're your best friends. And you don't get another shot with them on the on the on the field that you you've grown to love, and um, it's a it's a special day, and, and and that's why each each year we go into senior day, we we better come out with a win because of the guys that have chipped away for four or five years at this program, and and it's um it's 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 for them, and and that's what we want to do. Thank you. Hey, Mike, over here. Um, do you think that you need failure and adversity to eventually have success? I think so. I mean, um, I don't think there's any athlete or any team ever that hasn't gone through some type of adversity, whether, no matter what it would be. Um, I think that's just how sports and, and life is. You, you don't grow unless you're uncomfortable. And uh, this team has certainly had its uncomfortable and, and challenging moments this season. And it's been fun to see the way guys react and the way that the coaching staff and the team as a whole reacts. Um, to it, and and it's been, and it's been a unique season in the fact that yeah we've we've had some struggles. We're, we're not, our obviously our record doesn't show what we wanted it to show at the beginning of the year. But um, there's a lot of small victories that we've taken away this year with uh, the attitude, the leadership, and and things that we know we need to do better. 
and improve on. And we've done that to this point so far this year, and we're excited for the next two weeks and um, whatever happens after that, so be it. But um, yeah, absolutely. You, you definitely need to have some adversity in your life to be able to get better. Um, can you share or think of any other examples in your life that maybe you've experienced failure and adversity in that you did see kind of like reap the benefits of those experiences? Well, I think every day you go onto the practice field. Um, I've had, I've gotten beat more times in, than an offensive lineman under Harry Heastan could probably count. Um, and each, each and every time that I do get beat, there's a lesson in each one, whether it be a technique thing, whether it be getting my head in the right place for why I missed the block or anything. It's the football challenges you each and every day. And um, that's why we love this game. And that's why it keeps you coming back for more because you're never satisfied and you're never, you never have that feeling like I can never, I can't, I can be done with this. You know, um, there's always so much to learn. There's always so much to improve on. And, and like I said, each and every day of practice provides its own challenge. And, and um, like I said, that's what makes uh, greatest players great is, coming back from that. Hey Mike, uh, Coach Kelly yesterday talked specifically about Isaac and James and the job they were able to do uh, during the coaching change on the defensive side and keeping the team together. I was just curious, what did you see from them? I know you're on the other side of the ball, um, but as leaders, as leading by example, what were you able to see from them during that time? Well, I think it's, uh, it's first you have, to, you have to know that Isaac and James are two of the best guys you could ever have. Um, in that position for that time. The two of them um, kept the team together on that side of the ball when it was a trying time. Everybody was coming down on them in the earlier on in the season with, with, the, um, with some of the struggles that they had. And, and, and they've found a way to keep everyone together, play for the coaches that are still here, and dramatically improve our defense. And um, it's a huge testament to them and to our coaching staff that um, they've done an unbelievable job this entire season, and, and we're lucky to have Isaac and, and James especially on, on being captains this year, and um, it, they're the two right guys for the job for the, for the stuff, stuff that we've been dealing with this season for sure. And when you go against them on the practice field, when you go against the defense, how have you seen their leading by example, their leadership skills materialize out there? I think they're always making sure everybody's doing what they need to be doing. They're never, they're ne they don't let anybody just kind of coast through practice or, or anybody, they, if they mess up, they're, they're the first ones to tell them about it. Um, they're making sure everybody's flying around, having fun and, and being energized and, and, and truly committing to what um, the defensive goals are and, and the defensive plan is. And, and they've held everybody accountable to the point where they've improved in, in an unbelievable way this season. And it, it, nobody really saw it coming at the beginning of the season with how, with how um, tough things were. But they've turned it around, and, and it's a testament to those guys for sure. Thanks. Sorry, just one more follow up. When you were talking about the small victories, can you just like list some of the ones that, you, that really stick out to you? I think it's just the energy, the attitude, and, and the leadership have been the biggest things that this team has um, accomplished this season. It's it, like, like we've talked about earlier today, um, it's easy to just kind of keep going into practice every day, jumping around, having fun when you're 9-1 and one going into the last game, or 10-1 and one going into the last game of your season like we were last year. Um, this year, it's obviously been a little bit harder to understand what what this team is working for now and 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 everybody has kind of gotten the message that it's just about getting better personally and as a team and I think that the way that people have took that with stride and the way that this team has been fighting to get better and coming together and growing closer in in this hard time is is the biggest victory we could have had and I think that um, it could have easily gone the wrong way and, uh, and, and it's, a, it's a huge victory for this team that it didn't. And, and that's the biggest thing we've, we've, we've held on to this year.